Hello, hello, guys. How are you today? Hey, hey. Hi. How's everything? Como, sa, como va todo? How's everything? Is it good? Very nice. And you? Uh, I'm doing great. You know, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm still alive. You know, todavía estoy vivo. Así que, okay, vamos bien. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, okay, guys. So, uh, let's see. We are going to... Um, we are going to start with the, with the class right now to take advantage of the time and ask pretty much what we're going to do. Give me just a second. Okay, there we go. All right. So, um, okay, guys. Now I just want to share my screen right here. Give me a minute. Here we go. It's number. Give me a second. Okay, guys. So yesterday we were talking about, uh, you know, like the first. Uh, I would say we were basically finishing, you know, the first uh, section, which it was uh, that about the bird to be and all that, you know. So you guys need to remember that uh, we have like. Uh, you know, the, the bird to be has three forms, am, um, is, and are. We also pair them or conjugate them with the subject pronouns. So which are the subject pronouns? It's I, do, he, she, it, we, do, they. And so basically this is the way it goes. Like I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, you are, they are. So, and that's basically what we were doing. We were also doing like just now questions, you know, and all that thing. And basically asking those questions, like to practice everything that we had, right? Um, I don't think you guys have a question about that, but I don't know if you have a question about the bird to be or the just now questions, guys. Questions about that? No. Okay. No question. Great. No. Awesome. Thank you. So today, guys, we are going to start with the section two. And so what's the section two about? Well, we're not going to start. We're going to start and finish it today. So uh, I hope you were able to work on that. And so what we have, it's actually this right here uh, about the, uh, well, the name of the unit, it's called what's, what's in your bag. So then we're going to be talking about this and this. Just know and where questions with the verb to be. And the prepositions. What prepositions? In, in front of, behind, on, next to, and under. So that's what we are going to uh, talk about. So um, do you guys have like um, something or any idea about that? Well, we'll talk about that, okay? Just in a minute. So just so you guys know, uh, this is what, what it is. So one thing, we have this and this. Now the pronunciation is a little, just a little, little different. This and this, it's a little longer. The second one, it's a little longer, you know? And the first one is short. This, this, right? That's what it is. Um, so, then what we have is that these it's for singular, you know, we use it for singular things, right? And this it's plural. Now, both of them, we use them with things that are close, you know, like close, like cerca, near, right? That's what we use them with. So this is the first thing that we need to um that we need to know. Okay, that's like the first thing we need to know. That is how we use it. Eh, eso es lo primero que tenemos que saber. Que tenemos this, que es singular, para singular. Y tenemos this, que es para plural. Okay? Plural things. Ojo, y lo, las dos los usamos para cosas que están cerca. Like pretty close. Okay? Uh, that's basically what we use it for. Now, um, Eh, bueno, partiendo de eso, eh, es lo que necesitamos eh, saber, ¿ok? Eh, 
we are going to, well, tenemos que tener eso claro primero. One is for singular and the other one is for plural. Okay, we need to get that. And we use it for clothes that are, uh, things that are close to us. Okay, we good with that? Vamos bien hasta ahorita? Are we good on that? Yes, questions so far? No? No. Good, okay. That's, that's actually pretty good. Okay, so um, now because we don't have any question, we'll continue right now. And let me share my screen right here. Okay, so here we go. Give me just a second. All right. I was just kind of making the screen big. Okay, guys. Uh, let's see. Now, the next thing that we have is uh, this right here. Uh, this is uh, just some voc vocabulary, okay? So I'm going to play the video and I need, I need you to um, listen and repeat. That's what I want you to do, please. So listen and repeat, all right? Here we go. A cell phone. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll become familiar. Can you hear that? Good, thank with you. common objects, yeah. which people have in their bags. We will listen to a quick audio, and you should listen and repeat. An address book. A hairbrush. A wallet. Sunglasses. A CD player. A camera. Keys. A cell phone. Okay. Now, that is something that we have right there. Those are basically, a, you know, some objects. You know, it's just some vocabulary as well. So we got a hairbrush, an address book, a camera, keys, a cell phone, a wallet, sunglasses, and a ZD player, okay? That's what we have. But before we continue, I like to explain something to you guys. And there is something that we have to use, that we have to know. Um, vaya. Antes de, de incluso comenzar a explicarles, dice dar un poquito más a fondo. Necesitamos saber algo. Fíjense que hay algo que se llama, uh, well, those are articles as well. Um, indefinite articles that we have uh, a and an. They mean the same thing. Significan lo mismo. Uno o una. Okay. Uh, but there is a thing that we need to talk about. So we have a. We use it when the next word starts with the consonant sound. Okay. And we use an when the next word it starts with a vowel sound. Consonants, consonantes, right? And vowel, vocales. Entonces, usamos a cuando la siguiente palabra comienza con una consonante, con sonido de consonante. Y an cuando la siguiente palabra comienza con sonido de vocal. Y ya les voy a dar un par de ejemplos. Acuérdense que this y this Los dos significan lo mismo, solo que uno es plural y singular. Por ejemplo, this sería este o esta. Entonces, luego tenemos this, que sería lo mismo, solo que en plural, estos o estas. Right? That's what it is. This and this. Ok, entonces, so, right here we can say, this is an apple. Teacher, pero ¿por qué decimos an y no a? It's because of the rule. It's for la regla que les decía. Because this is a vowel sound, then we have to say, this is an apple. And then we have the other one. This is a wallet. Why? ¿Por qué? Because it starts with the uh, consonant sound. That's what it is. For example, if I say, this is mm, cell phone, okay. What do I need here? ¿Qué necesito aquí? Do I use a or an? What do you think? 
A. 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 A? Mm -hmm. Yes. A. A sound. Yeah. Why? Because this is a consonant. consonant. Right. But what about if I say this, uh, this are, um, I would say, uh, I'm thinking about a word. Um, no, no, my bad. I'm, I'm going to choose another one. This uh, is mm, eraser. Eraser is right? So, what do I use? A or an? An. An, an right? An. Because it starts with the vowel sound, right? <laughs> that's what we have. That's what we have to use, right? So, um, all right. So, that's basically what it is, and that's what we need to know. So, questions about that so far? I pregunta sobre eso ahorita? No? Yes? Are we clear? No. No, sure. Okay, well, let's no. do something. Yo creo que ya la mayoría está. Vamos a tomar la asistencia. Les voy a pedir de su ayuda. So voy a llamar sus nombres. Si ustedes, you say I'm here or present or anything you want to say. Okay, so let's go. Um, Abigail, Elizabeth. I am here. Thank you. Alejandro Antonio. Present. Anderson, Jeremy. Present. Blanca, Stephanie. Briseida, Lis uh, Lisbeth. Okay. All right. Uh, then we go with uh, Camila Lisset. Present. Carlos Aníbal. Present. Cecia Gemima. Claudia Maricela. Present. Cristian Daniel. Elsie Gabriela um, Emilio Isaac Present um, Estela Elizabeth I'm here Estela Marisol I'm here teacher Fernando José Present Floricia, Floricia Mejiva. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Uh, Brenda Guadalupe. Hazel Marcela. Okay. I'm also checking the chat, okay? Mm -hmm. so. You guys don't worry. Um, Ingrid Esmeralda. Present. Iris Milena. Present. Jaime Alexander. Jaime Iván. Okay. Uh, then let's go with uh, Juana Isabel. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Karina Jamilet. Carla Joanna. I'm here, teacher. Carla Marcela. I'm here. Uh, Kevin Joel. Patricia Dorila. I'm here, teacher. And Lazaro Eduardo. Present. Thank you so much. 
Okay, guys, thank you for helping me with that. I really appreciate it, okay? All right, guys. So uh, what I was explaining to you is that, you know, that uh, we actually need to sure. remain here. Tell me. Sorry. Um, if, for example, if the word starts with the letter H, uh, what's up with that? We use the letter A or an. Mm, good job. Good question. Well, actually, this is a rule right here. If the word, if the next word uh, starts with a vowel sound, which is vowel is like a vocal, yes, you have to use an. But if it starts with the consonant, then you have to use a. Okay. So, for example, this is a cell phone. Why a and not an? Because this is the letter C and this is a consonant sound. It's una consonante, sonido consonante. That's why, por eso necesita a. Pero si es una vowel sound, entonces ahí sí necesita an. Then you need an. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Is it is it clear um now a little bit more or is that clear? No. Sí, me hace más sentido así. Eh, no sé si eh, me expliqué le pude solventar su duda. Uh, entonces mm. prácticamente solo importa si empieza con vowel or consonant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you have to focus is on that. Hay que prestarle atención ahí, cómo es que comienza. Y ahí, ahí lo tenemos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Okay, guys. So, um, as I said, we will have to take advantage of the time right here because, uh, because you know, we need to finish uh, what we have right here. And... Uh, we need to cover like a couple of things. I hope you were able to work on the on the platform. I I hope you were able to do that. Okay. Um. Now we have right here the explanation about this and this. Uh. So remember, uh, remember, guys, that uh, you know, this it's singular and this it's plural, right? Right here, we have two more examples about what we were talking right here, which is uh, pretty good, actually. But I think we're good with that. Uh, but remember, this singular, this plural. And both, we use them to talk about things that are close to us. And if possible, something that we have on our hands, you know, if possible. So that's, that's what we have. Um, so... Uh, let's watch this video right here, and then I'm going to uh, give some explanation about it, okay? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll become familiar with this. And you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And the, yes. Before I start explaining this topic, we're going to listen to a quick audio, which illustrates how this topic is used. Let's listen and repeat. Wow, what's this? It's a camera. Oh, cool. Thank you, Helen. It's great. You're welcome. Now open this box. Okay. Oh, uh, what are these? They're earrings. Oh, they're interesting. Thank you, Rex. They're very nice. In order to understand the concept of this and these, I would like to start by explaining the following. Number one, you're going to use this, that spell out T-H-I-S, whenever you're talking about one object, which is near you. Number two, you're going to use these that spell out T H E S E whenever you're talking about two or more objects which are near you. On a different class, I'll explain how to use that and those. 
So as you can see on the screen, there is a camera. And therefore, whenever we talk about one object, we're going to say, this is a camera. If we want to ask a question about a particular object which is near to us, we will ask in the following way. What's this? It's an earring. On the other hand, on the screen, you also see two cameras. And therefore, whenever you refer to two or more objects which are near from you, you will say, these are cameras. Notice that the article A from the previous example disappears because we're no longer talking about one object, but instead two or more. If we want to ask a question about two or more objects which are near to us, we will ask in the following way. What are these? They're earrings or they're cameras, for example, right? For our practice exercise, I would like for you to look at the image and practice making questions. On the screen, you also see- okay. So that's a little bit more of the explanation I was telling you about. Now, um, something that we need to focus on, guys, it's basically how we are going to make, a, I will say, the structures and the questions and Which all is, that. You will okay? say, so, um, ask a question about a second right here. Cameras. What's okay. this? Let me just put it up here. And this is what we have to talk about. Now, if I say right here, guys, for example, what's this? You know, then we have a way to say it's a, and then just say the thing that it is, right? For example, if I say, um, Camila, Lisette, if I say, what's this? Mm -hmm. What can you say? What's this? Uh, computer. No, look at this. Oh, cell phone. Okay, what's this? It's a cell phone. It's a cell phone. It's. Don't forget to say it's. Okay. Now, if I say, for example, Crisia Dorella, what's this? Is a mouse. It's a mouse. It's mm -hmm. a mouse. It's a mouse. So pay attention. So whenever somebody is asking you a question with these, entonces cuando les están preguntando, what's this? Normalmente usted, nosotros vamos a usar el pronoun it, right? So it's a ¿Por qué? Porque this es singular. Entonces sería es, esto es, un o una, and then you give the answer. And is the other way, is the other case, when somebody asks you, what are this? Then you can say, y ahí ustedes pueden decir a couple of things. You can say, uh, they are pencils or you can either say it in um in the contracted in the contracted way you can say there you can contract it pencils okay there pencils that's just an example okay so that's what we do and teacher pero mire para mí esa pronunciación de this if this suena casi lo mismo ¿Cómo hago para, para saber cuál es cuál? There is one thing that you can do. Of course, you need to listen because the pronunciation is this, kind of short. And we have the other one that is this, right? This, this. This, this, right? It's a little longer. And it also because it has the letter E right here, okay? But, ¿cómo sería o cuál sería otra forma de poder identificar cuando están usando this o this? Cuando le hacen una pregunta y para usted suena igual. ¿Cómo sería? ¿Quién me dice? 
con el is or are. Ajá. Ok. And basically it is the bear to be. Ok. Porque este this es singular. Entonces acá tenemos que usar is, right? Como what is this? Entonces is, porque is es la forma singular del verbo to be. That's the singular form of the verb to be. Entonces, pero acá, what are these? ¿Por qué estamos usando are? Porque este es plural. Y no puedo decir, ¿qué es estos? Right? So, tengo que decir, ¿qué son estos? What are these? Right? So, that's what it is. Así que si usted le preguntan, are these? What are these? Ah, no, me están preguntando por this en plural. Entonces, yo ahí ya sé que... Puedo usar y tengo que usar el pronombre they para hablar de los objetos. Sí, podemos usar they para responder de los objetos también en plural. Por ejemplo, they are pencils. Or puede ser contractado, they're pencils. That's what it is. Questions about that, guys? No, teacher. No? Okay. Were you able to complete the knowledge check? We don't complete that knowledge check. Do you have any question about that or anything? No? Okay. Um, If you guys don't have any question, we will go right now with the just no questions with the bird to be. And... Sorry, tell me. Con la pronunciación que acaba de mencionar el this o this, es con, como que si pronunciáramos como con T o con T. This. Sería como más larguito. This y eh, this. This. Y también hay, tiene como un sonido de E, like this. Being honest, it's not a big difference. No hay una gran diferencia, la verdad. ¿Y cómo pueden hacer para darse cuenta? Si están usando are o is. Así es como podrían darse cuenta también. Eh, si de repente no logramos como entender cuál es la diferencia entre this y this. Pero sería como this, cortito, this, un poquito más largo. This, this. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay, yesterday we were talking um, about the just no questions, right? So if I ask you right now, Anderson, Jeremy, are you happy today? How do you answer? Repeat. Yes. Are you happy today? Uh, no. No what? No what? Uh, no. No happy. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. Remember, that is the way that you pronounce, uh, that is the way that you answer. Acuérdense, la just no questions tienen dos respuestas. ¿Cuáles serán? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Claro, va a depender del subject, right? Que si usted va a decir, yes, I am, or yes, yes, or no, I'm not, right? So that's what it is. But, for example, uh, let's see. Uh, Emima, are you a teacher? Eh, su micrófono está apagado mismo. It's turned off. Okay. 
Sorry, I can hear you. No, no le puedo escuchar. Ay, de, de ley, trate de, de trabajar con su, con su audio. A, a ver si podemos escucharla después y después me responde. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Abigail, de Elizabeth, are you a teacher? No, I am not. No, um, I am not. Or you can say, no, I'm not. Okay. okay. One little thing, guys. Una cosa, eh, si de repente usted me va a responder, si yo soy o oh, yes, I am, esa es la única forma en la que usted no puede contractar, ¿ok? Si de repente usted me dice, si yo le digo, are you a teacher? Y usted me dice, yes, I am. Mm -mm. It can't be. Abigail no me dijo así, solo lo digo porque eh, es algo que debemos saber, ¿ok? So, tiene que ser, yes, I am. Esa es la única vez que no va a poder hacer una contracción con el verbo to be en este tipo de pregunta, ¿ok? With the verb to be, ¿ok? So, just remembering, solo recordando, ¿ok? Just remembering, just remembering the rules. Ok, now I'm going to ask Fernando José, is Abigail a teacher? Sorry, can you repeat again, please? Sure, it's... Abigail, a teacher? Uh, no, she is not. Uh, no, she is not. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, she is not. Or no, she is not. It's up to you. Yes, that's what it is. Okay, Blanca Stephanie. Um, is Fernando Jose your classmate? Is Fernando Jose your classmate? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. yes, I am. Vaya, miéntame si quiere. Acuérdese que tiene solo dos tipos de, 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 de respuestas. Esa. Así que elija una de las dos. Y no importa que me esté mintiendo, pero elijo una de las dos. <ríe> ok. ¿Es Fernando José your classmate? Yes. Ajá, podemos decir dos, mire. Yes. Eh, sorry, you can say yes or no. Right? No. Y después completa, right? En ese caso, yo le pregunto, ¿es Fernando José su compañero? O se tiene que responder, yes, what? Yes. Yes. ¿Por quién le estoy preguntando, sí. Blanquita? Por José y Fernando José. Y él es él. ¿Cómo se dice él en inglés? He. Yes, he is. Right? Right? That's what it is. Okay? Just keep it in mind. Or you can say, no, he is not. Right? Or you can say, no, he's not. Anyways. That's what it is. Um, okay. Now, let's do something. Let's watch the video right here. And we will just... Practice, okay? We will just practice later on. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to form yes, no, and where questions would be. We'll start by listening to a quick audio program, which illustrates how this topic is used. Oh, no. Where are my car keys? Relax, Kate. Are they in your purse? No, they're not. They're gone. I bet they're on the table in the restaurant. Excuse me, are these your keys? Yes, they are. Thank you. See? No problem. And is this your wallet? Hmm. No, it's not. Where is your wallet, Joe? In my pocket. Wait a minute. 
That is my wallet. Let's try to make sense of the chart that you see on the screen. In order to form yes or no questions, we're going to follow the next formula. Or to be plus this, or in this case could be these, plus some kind of complement. So verb to be plus subject plus complement. In this case, we want to say that the subject is uh, this or these. So let's try to make some examples. As you can see on the screen, the example is this your wallet? We have the verb to be. In this case, happens to be is. And then we're going to use this. The complement in this case is your wallet. And then, of course, we put a question mark there. Um, the other example that you see is your verb to be these. Your keys, and of course, we put a question mark at the end. Let me give a couple of. I'm going to interrupt a little bit right there. Now, it says right here. What you need to do the questions. Ah, ya vimos, hicimos un review de las just now questions con el verb to be que estábamos viendo ayer. Ahora, si son con el verbo to be todavía, pero vamos a usar this and this. Okay, so for example. Is this your wallet? Entonces, acá básicamente lo único que necesitamos hacer es seguir una estructura. Y se recuerdan, entonces si vamos a usar this singular, significa que la forma del verbo to be que tenemos usar, que usar es la singular, que sería is. Is this your wallet? Entonces, ¿qué necesitamos? Ver to be, this o this y el complemento. For example, aquí yo podemos cambiarla. Is this your wallet? Is this your cell phone? Is this your umbrella? Is this your computer? Is this your computer? Is this your monitor? Is this your car? Is this your house? Y ven, solo vamos a ir cambiando el complement. Entonces, una cosa que sí les puedo sugerir, chicos, es tratar de aprenderse como estas estructuras. Porque si ustedes se las aprenden y ya las pueden manejar, al final es como ir armando cositas. Ya después sabe más palabras y usted va a ir armando las um, sentences o las oraciones uh, o las questions, right? So that's what it is. Pero si fuera plural, sería like, are these your keys? Are these your shoes? Are these your pencils? Are these your, I don't know, socks? Anything like that, okay? So keep... The structure in mind, okay? Keep it in mind. More examples. Is this your cell phone? Question mark at the end. Are these your things. In order to answer this type of questions, you're typically going to answer with, yes, it is. No, it's not. If it's plural, for example, yes, they are. No, they're not. Now that we understand yes or no questions with B, let's explore WH questions with B. We're going to follow a similar rule for WH questions. Let me go ahead and put that on the screen. WH word plus verb to be plus subject plus complement. The rule is very simple and it's quite similar as making yes or no questions. The only difference is that now we are adding a WH word. So what are WH words? Let me explain. We use WH words to get information from others. For example, who, okay, we will stop right there just a little bit, okay? So about the just no questions, okay? 
this part right here is what I was telling you. Okay. Acá, uh, we're not going to talk about that shit. Oh, this is, where is it? Right here. Hold on, give me just a minute. Okay. So right here, guys, we can make questions. If I say, is this your cell phone? Then you can say, uh, yes, it is. Okay. And this is another case where you cannot use contraction. You cannot say, you cannot say uh, something like, yes, it's. No, you can't say this. There's no way you can't say this, okay? So you don't have to say it. You have to say, yes, it is. So in this part, no contractions allowed, okay? No contractions. So it's like, yes, it is, right? Then we have another question like, are this your keys, for example? Then you can say, yes, they are, okay? And you can or you can say no. Sorry. My bad. No, they are not, right? So the same thing, you can't use it like that, okay? So you can say just there. Mm -mm, you can say that. You can't say that because that is affirmative. So basically we just need to we can do the contraction just in negative, okay? Yes, there. You can say that. You can't. So it's going to be this way. Just right here, you can say, you can just contractions like say, yes, they're, uh, no, they're not, right? Like that. So that's what it is. And please keep in mind and pay attention that if you are using this, you have to use are. And if you are using these, you have to use is, right? Questions, questions about this? No teachers. Cool. No teachers. Awesome, awesome. If you guys don't have any question, let's continue. I have questions. You're typically going to answer with, yes, it is, questions, questions. Let me go ahead and plus verb to be, plus subject, plus complement. The rule is very simple and it's quite similar as making yes or no questions. The only difference is that now we are adding a WH word. So what are WH words? Let me explain. We use WH words to get information from others. For example, who, what, when, where, how, why are some examples of WH words. Now let's put that rule into practice. If we look at um, the example on the chart, right, we can see the question towards the right hand side. It says, where is your wallet so if we follow that rule we're going to put a wh word plus the verb to be plus some kind of complement wallet and of course we put a question mark there where is your wallet where are my keys how are you today why are you hungry where is the police station to answer wh questions you now need to give information for example for the question where is your wallet notice that the answer is it's in my pocket 
And also, all those questions that you heard on the conversation a few minutes ago. Now, it's your turn to make as many examples as possible. Practice making yes or no questions and WH questions, right? We can see. Okay, let me interrupt there for a minute and actually we finished that up. Um, there is a difference between just no questions and WH questions. What's the difference? In just now questions, you have only two possible answers, yes and no. But in WH questions, you have more than one answer. I mean, it can vary. The answer can vary. Por ejemplo, si a usted le pregunto, ¿Cómo está la hora? ¿Cómo está ahora? Usted no me va a decir, yes, I am, right? No. ¿Por qué? Porque esta es una WH question, también conocida como information question. Why? Porque se tiene que dar más information. You have to give more information. Ok. Entonces, um, hay que establecer la diferencia primero. Just no questions, two answers. Dos tipos, dos posibles respuestas. Yes or no. Por eso se llaman just no questions, porque tienen solo dos posibles respuestas. Two possible answers, yes and no. But the WH words, I'm sorry, WH questions, they have more than one answer. Okay, y les vuelvo a decir lo mismo. Si usted le preguntan cómo están, usted no va a decir sí o no va a decir no, no, porque no le están preguntando eso. So, tiene que dar más information. Ojo, aquí la respuesta puede variar. Okay. Por ejemplo, si a usted, bueno, si usted le preguntan, uh, how are you today? You say, I'm fine. I'm doing great. Us, uh, pretty good. I'm doing all right. So far, so good. Okay. En ningún momento dijimos yes or no. Okay. ¿Entendemos esa diferencia? Do we understand that difference between one and the other? Yes? Yes. Ajá. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. All right, now, one more thing. Las WH, word, WH questions llevan lo que se llaman WH words. Okay, why? Because those are called like information words as well or interrogative words, for example. Okay, so, ¿por qué se llaman así? Porque llevan palabras de WH al principio. WH, 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 and WH. That's why they are called WH questions. Then, you actually need the verb to be plus the subject plus the complement. And it's actually right here. He was making some examples. For example, where is your wallet? ¿Dónde está tu cartera? Where is your wallet? Okay, and then you can say, the wallet is on the table. For example, we will check that out right now. ¿Qué dice esa pregunta? Es como decir, ¿dónde está tu cartera? Pero, ¿qué pasaría si yo quiero... Pregúntenme, ¿dónde están tus carteras? ¿Cómo sería? In English, how would that be? Where are your wallets? Where are your wallets? Good job, yes. Entonces, ¿por qué, teacher, pero por qué cambiamos is y ahora decimos are? Ok, entonces acá lo que va a pasar es que usted va a usar el verbo to be, sí, pero ¿qué forma del verbo to be? Va a depender del sujeto que usted esté usando. Si es un sujeto que lleva la forma del verbo to be plural, pues va a usar are, ¿verdad? Si es un sujeto que lleva are. ¿Se acuerdan que ayer les estábamos conjugando? Like, I am, you are, he, she is, we are, they are, you are, right? So that's what it is. Okay, y al final, wallet, tenemos que agregarle la S también. 
Porque si yo les digo, ¿dónde está tu o dónde están tus carteras? No, ¿verdad? Tendría que ser, ¿dónde están tus carteras? Where are your wallets? So you need to make sure about that, okay? Okay, so that's what you need to do. So you need the WH word, where to be, the subject, and the complement. Okay, questions so far? No question, teacher, but uh, if I leave before the class is over, teacher, uh, it's because I don't have a charge and I don't have a charger. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, no problem. I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so that's pretty much what it is, guys. For the okay? bucket. And um, also, all those questions that you heard on the conversation a few minutes ago. All right, let me Now, show. it's your turn to make Stop as many right examples. Okay. And so, basically, that's what it is, okay? Now, we have the... Uh, there is one thing right here. Why is something that we use for questions only, okay? Este es por qué, pero de pregunta. Y para responder, nosotros vamos a decir because, para respuestas, right? Because, right? Por qué? Por ejemplo, uh, why are you here? Por qué estás aquí? It's like, ah, because I have classes, okay? So that's what it is. Una cosa más, probablemente ustedes algunas veces vayan a escuchar cause, que es como decir because, pero es bien informal. Okay, that's informal. Uh, you can watch it in movies, you can listen to that in movies or things like that. That's what you can do. And that's basically what it is. Now. Uh, Teacher, excuse me. Uh, uh, Fernando's computer turning off. Sorry, can you say that again? Can you speak louder, please? Uh, Fernando's computer turned off. Oh, it turned off. Okay, I got it, I got it. Thank you, thank you for letting me know. Uh, dígale ahí que si puede reportarlo también en, en el grupo, eh, sería much better para que ellos sepan ahí que, que por eso es que no está conectado en la clase. Please. Mm -hmm. Ah, o oh, no sé si lo puso en el grupo, no revisé. Sí, thank yeah, you. Yes. Yeah, sorry, my bad, my bad. Okay. Yeah, I see it here. No estaba viendo el teléfono, pero yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, thank you. I got it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Entonces, cause, lo van a escuchar. Es informal. Es como decir because. Es la misma cosa que nosotros hacemos, que hacemos las palabras cortas. Por ejemplo, nosotros decimos... Bueno, tendríamos que decir, voy a ir a tal lugar, pero algunas veces lo hacemos corto y decimos, voy a ir, <laughs> right? So it's the same way, same way. They just make it short, like, cause, you know, cause, right? That's what it is. Okay, so questions about that, guys? No? Teacher. Okay. Uh, ¿Lograron hacer ahí la partecita del knowledge check? ¿Alguna pregunta que tengan sobre eso? ¿No? Va. Entonces ahí vamos a ver ya lo último, chicos, que serían las prepositions. Les voy a poner el video. I'm going to play the video and I need you to listen and read it. Keys are on the box. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn how to use prepositions in order to describe the location of different objects. You'll learn the prepositions in, in front of, behind, on, next to, and under. Let's start by looking at the images on the screen. The images illustrate the preposition and its meaning. Let's start with the preposition in. We will start with the example. The question is, where are the keys? The keys are in the box. The next one, where are the keys? The keys are in front of the box. 
where are the keys? We can see the keys are behind the box. The keys are behind the box. Where are the keys? The keys are on the box. The keys are on the box. Where are the keys? The keys are next to the box. The keys are next to the box. Where are the keys? The keys are under the box. Now is your turn to make some examples. Look at the images on the screen and practice making the questions and answers just like we did a minute ago. Then I would like for you to share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, so that's what it is, you know. This uh, topic about the prepositions, it's actually kind of, kind of easy, I would say. Uh, just something you guys need to know is this. Okay. So, in sería como dentro, right? On, a, uh, sorry, in front of, enfrente de, behind, detrás, on, sobre, next to, a la par, y under, debajo. Okay. También tenemos que hacer uso del article de. Este nos ayuda como a definir de qué, qué estamos hablando. De box, la caja, que puede significar la el, uh, los y la también. La pronunciación es de, así como nosotros decimos en español de. But, pero hay una vez eh, cuando también va a pronunciarse di. ¿Cuándo sería eso? Cuando la siguiente palabra comience con vowel sound. Por ejemplo, aquí no diríamos de apple. We will say the apple. Pero no, nunca, nunca, nunca va a ser da. Uh -uh. Va a ser de or di. ¿Ok? ¿Cuándo sería di? Cuando la siguiente palabra comience con vowel. The apple. ¿Ok? If not, sería de computer. ¿Ok? Or anything. ¿Ok? Just to finish, just to finish. We have a couple of questions here. We say... Where are the cell phones? Ok, y entonces acá estamos respetando la estructura que acabamos de aprender. WH word, bear to be. Eh, I would say the complement. And it's part of the subject as well. Where are the cell phones? So we're talking about they, right? Entonces, so we can answer in two ways. Vamos a responder en dos formas. We can say... The cell phones are under the table. Esa es la forma larga, pero usted dice, no, teacher, sabe que yo lo quiero hacer corto. Entonces, you can say, they're behind the sofa. Por ejemplo, podemos hacerlo contractado. They're behind the sofa. Okay? So, that's one example. Another example is, where is the wallet? And then you can say, the wallet is next to the TV, right? And then there is another example, or you can say, it's next to the chair. Entonces, teacher, entonces podemos usar el pronombre it cuando estén preguntando por algo singular. Sí, podemos. O podemos repetir la, la cosa por la que nos están preguntando. Entonces, también podemos usar they, teacher, para referirnos a esas cosas en plural. Sí, podemos usar they. They are behind the sofa. And so that's pretty much it. I don't know if you have a question about this, guys. No? So, for example, if I say, uh, un ejemplo. Okay, si tengo acá el cell phone y el mouse, yo le pregunto, uh, let's see, Aníbal. Where is the cell phone? ¿Cómo respondería anyone? Where is the cell phone? Uh, 
¿Alguien que le quiera ayudar? The cell phone are on the hand. Uh, say that again, please. Repeat it. The, the cell, cell phone are on the hand. Okay, you can say the cell phone is on the hand o a la parte que estará. Eh? The cell phone is mouse. Next to the mouse. Next to the mouse. Y ahora, ¿dónde está el cell phone? The cell phone is in the... front of the mouse. Y ahora, the cell phone is behind the mouse. And the that's mouse. basically what it is, guys. So, any question, guys? No? Vaya. No. Eh, fíjense que, sí, en ese, no sé qué ocurre un poquito, pero eh, ahí, chicos, solo recordarles, traten de eh, trabajar en la plataforma, asegurarse que completen todo. Eh, la siguiente semana comenzaríamos la sección uh, 3, y ahí probablemente podamos ir un poco, like, slow, you know, a little bit more, like, taking time and all that. But that's what we're going to be doing. Así que si no tienen ninguna otra pregunta, chicos, I let you go y nos vemos next week. All right? Okay. All right, guys. So, asegúrense de completar eso. Recuerden que tienen hasta tomorrow midnight. Okay? So, bye-bye, guys. You guys bye. take care. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye, guys. Take care.